We have our three presenters here already. We have J. Rowe from the People's Pantry, which um, was the South Wedge. What was the full title, Jay? South Wedge Food Program. Mm. Food Program. Mm -hmm. And we have mm -hmm. Nick Ricotta. Is that correct? Okay, from Spiritus Christi. And it was, uh, my understanding is it was his idea to build the food, the little free pantry outside of the, our church building. And um, he's here to tell us what inspired him and about that process. And then we have Barb Simmons, also from Spiritus Christi, who helps um, to, she and her husband Ken help to uh, refurbish and stock the pantry. And um, I'm curious, like how, how we can help uh, Spiritus with that endeavor and, 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 and join in that. It's not showing you. And uh, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. Okay. I'll say hello to Aline, to Ron. <laughs> I see you over there. And so I'll ask everybody to um, mute yourself if you're able to. And um, I'll let, I'll turn it over to Jay first. And he can tell us a little bit about himself and uh, the People's Pantry and what that's all about. Well, first, I'll say, Hello to Carolyn. <laughs> We're just getting started. I'm just turning it over to Jay. Hello, everyone. Uh, Hello. How is everyone on this uh, bright but almost snowy day? I see a lot of thumbs up. Good. Right. Good. Uh, so yeah, I'm Jay Rowe. Uh, I am the executive director of the People's Pantry uh, for uh, quite a long time. We were the South Wedge Food Program. I'll give you a little bit of history about uh, where we're coming from. Um, we were actually a food program of the uh, Calvary St. Andrews congregation for years. Um, we started back in the early 80s, uh, just serving the immediate community around that church over on uh, Ashland and, and Averill Streets. Um, and we continued on uh, as a program of theirs for uh, quite some time, uh, multiple decades going through uh, up until fairly recently. Uh, and we served roughly um, at, at its peak around uh, 400 people um, every month. Uh, pretty modest, but uh, there was still some considerable need in the South Wedge area. Um, when Calvary St. Andrews uh, closed in 2017, uh, there was still a need for the food program in that area. And so the uh, Presbytery of the Genesee Valley uh, came up with an agreement uh, we were to be rolled into the Rock Salt Center, and uh, that was to be uh, run out of the old church. And uh, we were a program of theirs for a while. That's when we became the South Wedge Food Program. And that was the old, I guess, peak of our, uh, of our volume of clientele, right around 400 people or so. And that continued up through um, really last year. And uh, then the pandemic happened. And uh, it was the strangest thing we, um, we were operating like usual. And we made a, a conscious decision to keep on operating. Uh, even though there was some worry that, uh, you know, um, transmission of the uh, COVID uh, pandemic around our community. So we had some heart-to-heart -heart, uh, talks with, with our key volunteers and decided we were going to be as careful as possible and continue to uh, serve our neighbors. Um, on top of that, we discovered a pretty significant need of, um, of uh, people who were challenged by mobility, uh, whether that be people who had COVID and couldn't leave their houses and still needed food, uh, or people who were um, 
I'll say uh, just typically bound to their homes and, and couldn't leave for whatever reason. I know in the very beginning of the pandemic uh, for quite some time, there was a worry about uh, using public transit, um, obviously so because we really didn't know much of what was going on. There were a lot of people that were afraid to get out there. Uh, and otherwise it was just difficult to be getting food. Um, you know, we had some people that were, uh, had just lost their jobs um, because of, of the furloughs or, or uh, lack of employment opportunities, um, you know, in their, um, in the workplaces that they had been uh, working for, for, for some time. So we had a lot of the newly unemployed. We had a lot of people who were just uh, not able to use public transit, couldn't get to the store. And that's when we started offering uh, delivery services. Uh, little did we know at that time that we had um, kind of uh, bitten off uh, a bigger project than we were aware of. Um, there was only one or two other organizations in the area that were offering delivery at the time and demand just skyrocketed. Uh, I think once it caught on that we were A, still open uh, and still serving people and B, we were delivering, uh, we just started getting phone calls left and right, um, started getting emails of people that uh, could use our service. So right now, um, in the beginning of 2022, we are at an all-time uh, peak of volume again, uh, which uh, confuses me and the people uh, around me that are also involved with other area food programs. Um, we had thought that demand would go down sometime last summer, uh, and for a bit it seemed to plateau. Uh, I think for a while we leveled off around 2,000 people a month, um, and uh, then we had word that there would be an extension of a, a child tax credit, uh, and for a very brief minute, we had a little bit of a dip in, uh, in volume, and uh, we thought, okay, the worst of it is over, people are starting to get hired back to their jobs, People can get out more, they can go shopping. We can relax a little bit. Um, unfortunately, the opposite happened. And uh, within another month, uh, our numbers were going straight up again, um, especially with the worry around Omicron and, and the um, ability of people to once again, access public transit or, or go to the store. I'm sure you're familiar with the term uh, food deserts. Uh, there's a lot of need in the city. Uh, right around the same time that this was happening um, last year, we uh, were told by the Presbytery of the Genesee Valley that they were going to sell Calvary St. Andrews. Uh, this created both an opportunity and a uh, large problem for us in that uh, we were no longer going to be able to remain in the South Wedge. Uh, so we started looking for new locations. It took uh, about 10 months to find the location that we're at right now, which is 555 Avenue D. That is the back half of the Lincoln Branch Library on Joseph Ave. And um, it's a phenomenal location. It puts us in uh, closer proximity to about a third of our clients which is very helpful for us, very helpful for them. Uh, the downside is we were uh, getting away very cheaply with the free rent that we had at Calvary St. Andrews. Now we are taking on $2,000 a month in rent that we pay to the city. Uh, so we're, we've been going through quite a few changes in the last several months. Uh, because of the move, we uh, thought it necessary to rebrand re ourselves uh, the South Wedge Food Program just didn't make any sense on Avenue D. Uh, so we pulled some of our volunteers and clients and the People's Pantry was uh, by far the, uh, the winning title that we adopted. Uh, because of uh, Rock Salt and Calvary St. Andrews uh, going away, 
that took away our 501c3. So we had to go through that whole process all over again. And uh, right now we're dealing with staffing issues at the IRS, which are delaying a lot of our paperwork going through. So it's been, um, it's been an interesting six months, uh, to say the least. Uh, that is uh, just about as long as I've been on board. Um, Katie Joe, I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with Katie Joe, who was the old uh, executive director. Uh, she stepped down back in June and uh, went to pursue um, a new career path. And uh, right around then is when I took over. Uh, and it's just been, it's been a wild ride. And uh, like I said, we have seen an uptick in the need of service like I uh, could have not predicted on my own. I don't think anyone would have predicted how much need there is in the community, even after so many resources have been made available to people. Right now, uh, I believe we just topped out at over 4,000 um, people that we're serving a month. Um, about a quarter of that is walk-up service and about three quarters is delivery. So that gives you a, a little bit of an idea of uh, the kind of operations we're, we're doing right now. Um, like I said, uh, we're, we're kind of coasting by on the generosity of others right now. Uh, but our expenses have skyrocketed because of the new location. Um, you know, I'm not going to tiptoe around it. Our biggest challenges right now are funding. Uh, we also have, have uh, been challenged with um, keeping drivers on staff uh, because there is such a need for delivery of uh, food items. Uh, we operate four days out of the week, uh, 9 a.m. to noon, typically Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. And we also have bulk drop-offs to uh, different uh, apartment complexes and, and uh, uh, different housing um, around uh, mostly Rochester, but we do serve uh, most of Monroe County. We do not discriminate based on need. We ask very few questions. If people come to us and they say they need food, they're hungry, that's all we require from them. Uh, we do have to jump through a couple of hoops because we work with Foodlink and they require a little bit more information uh, to feed their own statistics, uh, which is why we have um, uh, statistics on um, children versus adults uh, versus, uh, you know, the over 60 population that, um, that relies on us. And um, like I said, uh, we're just chugging along as best as we can. Um, but uh, this pandemic uh, is definitely driving a lot of need out there. I guess I'll open it up to questions now because I've, I've said quite a bit and I don't know what I haven't said yet, so. Yeah, any questions you can raise your hand or either, Carolyn. Um, we had a speaker for Sunday Forum from the Children's Library and I think it might be in the same building that you're in. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if there's any um, people like, that come to the, toy library that also then come to the food cupboard or or the other way around yeah in fact that's our one of our main drivers of foot traffic right now because we just moved in to our new location at the end of october uh, there's still not a lot of awareness uh, that we've moved um, but the library is fantastic at referring people to us uh, especially since we're right on the number three bus line uh, the bus stops right at the library, and the librarians are amazing at sending people to the back of the building. So they get their books, they get their internet access, they get their toys, and then they can get their food in the back. Elaine? So I'm interested in the process of <clears throat> how you get the food from Foodlink. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and how exactly it's distributed in like, is it grocery bags or uh, anyway, how, how does that happen? 
Sure, sure. Foodlink is um, is more or less the the middle person um, in a lot of ways between uh, the state and the uh, food distributors. Mm -hmm. uh, food product and funds then go through Foodlink, um, and we get semi regular uh, grants, basically an extension of a, a line of credit through Foodlink to order food products from them. They then come on, uh, our delivery day is now Thursday. So a big truck pulls up, they unload multiple pallets off uh, right in front of our, our door and they get loaded in. It's our volunteers that take those pallets and separate everything into grocery bags that way. So we'll get uh, like a pallet of you know, a thousand cans of beans. Uh, we'll get a separate pallet of um, of uh, vegetables, canned vegetables, uh, and uh, we'll go through those and we'll say, okay, on Wednesday we have this many delivery requests. We'll create, um, you know, two hundred bags of uh, a bags as we call them, which are certain allotment of, um, of food uh, specifically geared towards uh, individual adults or a uh, very small family. Uh, larger families get bee bags. There's also a double bee bag. Uh, those all get sorted and packed by our volunteers and staged in the food pantry, uh, ready to be distributed either by our, our driving staff or at the front door. So um, it's, it's very much like a you know, like a, almost like a Wegmans or a grocery order uh, where we are acting as a, a grocery store and we put in an order every week to Foodlink and they drop it off to us on the pallet. And then our, our staff, our volunteers have to do the rest of the work from there. And, and the drivers, you said that you're in need of drivers. So I'm, I'm also curious, um, do you separate out the, the, the bags according to location so that a driver takes something mm -hmm. within a certain block area? Of yeah. Yeah. So essentially we have a, a dispatcher uh, that works the phones um, and that's a very convoluted setup that we have there, but uh, they generate tickets and each driver gets a ticket and it's all geography based. So someone will take a ticket and uh, the ticket is say, you know, the west side of the city, uh, including a little bit of Greece. And it's uh, usually divided up into a nice little driving loop. Um, we don't have fancy software or anything that plots this out. It's just very smart people who work the desk and, uh, and plot it out for our individual drivers and they go out. We try to plot it out so that not anyone uh, and no one has to really worry about uh, using up a full gas tank or anything like that. It's just a small geographic area that they have to deal with and then they're done. And do they deliver it to the door? Unless we get other instructions, yes. We are, um, our rule is we can either deliver it to the porch or the door. We like to confirm that someone is home ahead of time although we don't like uh, too much face-to-face -face contact because of the pandemic. Um, so usually we'll just knock on the door, acknowledge that someone's home, leave it on their doorstep. Um, everyone is masked up. Uh, people are usually asked to wear a mask when they greet the delivery driver. Um, but we don't have too much in the way of contact beyond that. Like we won't go into their home and, and uh, put everything on the table for them. It's usually just... Uh, you know, like a conventional um, grocery delivery service. It, except that it sounds as though I'm, I'm just trying to imagine myself in this role. You might, mm -hmm. you might expect that. Um, so it, it, it could involve some fairly heavy lifting. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about uh, for the typical food delivery. What we like to do, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the public market has these banana boxes that a lot of food and produce come in. Right. And we will, we will usually stage the delivery in that. So we'll get one big paper bag and it's double bagged. So if you can imagine how heavy a, 
full double paper bag is. Right. And then we include uh, some produce uh, in another bag and it all fits in one of those banana boxes. So they can get to be, you know, 30 or 40 pounds. It's not, uh, it's not the lightest thing in the world. Um, but we also have a fair amount of, uh, drivers that, uh, have weight restrictions that we work with too. So, um, if someone is driving, a lot of people will choose to drive, uh, in pairs, so there's one person that does the driving and the other person that does the lifting. Um, sometimes we'll pair up people so that, uh, you know, those people with younger backs can go out and, and do the walking up to the door and, and the lifting. And um, maybe they don't have a car so that the other person is doing the driving and it seems to work out well. Okay. So there's, uh, there's a few different ways that we can do that so that, uh, you know, you won't break your back. Thank you. Sure. Any other? Mary. Uh, an idea of how um, you, you, you talked in terms of weight, mm -hmm. in terms of how much might be included in one delivery, but like, do you think of it in terms of how many meals it, it might provide? Or how many yeah, and I, I, I think I, I didn't catch the whole entire question, but we have, we, we, try to, uh, we try to work with what we get from Foodlink and from the different sources. It's not just Foodlink. Uh, we will get fresh produce from different uh, public market vendors. We do get donations in from the community. Um, Wegmans does deliver, or Wegmans does provide um, certain items to us and it's not a consistent menu all the time. We do have, uh, I think Foodlink is the most consistent because they offer the uh, canned shelf stable goods. Um, so we try to uh, mix it up as much as possible and, and offer a variety. A lot of times that isn't going to provide a whole meal. Uh, you can certainly get creative and, and make, um, like the one that comes to mind uh, that's easiest to make what, from what we offer is just like a simple rice and beans meal. Um, but we have such a variety that it provides, you know, half to three quarters of the ingredients you need for several meals. Um, and that's really just uh, aimed at stretching the, the budgets and, and ability of people that, that get our, our food boxes. So it's not necessarily like, well, you've got three meals here and then you're done and, and uh, good luck for the rest of the month. It's just meant to get someone just a little bit further with what they've got. Uh, what, how about one more question? I have two comments. Um, if I was hearing right, that you went from pre-pandemic to serving about 400 people to now 4,000 people. Is that correct? Correct. Wow. That's incredible. Um, the other thing that struck me too, is that you were able to tell that that child credit money really made a difference. Yeah, that was interesting. And we, um, we still haven't wrapped our head around what exactly happened there. We saw, we were expecting a decrease in, in services right when that, um, the child tax credit started going out to families. And um, it aligned itself with a couple other things that were happening um, in the world at that time. I mean, that was that started around the time that kids were going back to school and a lot of summer meal programs were ending. Um, and so, uh, you know, and, and various other things, uh, our own move included, um, we did uh, encounter a blip in our own distribution, not so much the driving, but the walk-up service, a lot of people we're just now learning that, uh, you know, we had moved across the city and our statistics weren't the greatest for that. Um, 
the, the child tax credit definitely made a difference in a lot of our, our clients. I think we heard firsthand um, that they were a little bit more able to, well, just to breathe easy for a little bit longer. Um, I think having a little bit more in the budget allowed them to, um, you know, to pay off some bills and to buy some, uh, you know, back to school stuff for the kids and whatnot. And certainly I think in the first month, um, you know, they were, they were buying food items and um, that helped a lot of people out. Um, of course, if that, uh, if those funds dry up um, and, um, you know, for, for most everyone, they, they went away pretty recently. Uh, they were back to um, coming to us. And uh, we saw that pretty quickly um, uh, how important we were to, to a lot of people in the community. Uh, right around the holidays, especially, I think people were struggling because, um, you know, even... <clears throat> 2021 versus 2020, it's a very different uh, world that we live in. And there are a lot of challenges now that they weren't dealing with a year ago or two years ago. So, um, you know, people were having to make some tough choices. And uh, um, I think they saw us as, uh, as a lifeline in a lot of regards. Uh, we weren't, because of the move, we weren't able to do our um, holiday uh, meal giveaway like we were in the past, uh, we had done a bit more uh, in prior years with uh, holiday food baskets. Um, and uh, we relied heavily on uh, Third Presbyterian to pack up and distribute some of ours uh, to uh, about 19 different families that uh, were in pretty desperate need and really appreciated a warm meal around the holidays. So, um, yeah, we, uh, we're, we're definitely witnessing some, some tough times out there. Um, and I'm, I'm thankful for the, the brief reprieve that we saw right around that time that those funds went out. But uh, unfortunately, you know, that didn't last nearly long enough. Yeah. All right. We'll circle back to you, Jay. Thank you so much for... Sure giving us all of this information. And Absolutely. now let's hear, let's hear from Nick. Nick Ricotta is, a, is youth from Spiritus Christi, who um, my understanding is you came, you came up with the idea to build the free food, um, the little, is it the name, the little free pantry? Is that what you call it? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's what you call it. Okay, and like, where did, where did that idea come from? How did you, how did you? Uh, yeah, so the project was actually uh, for my Eagle project, and uh, the place we meet at our church, um, uh, St. Martin's, a previous scout built a little free pantry at that one, so we thought it would be a good idea to um, build one at our church too, and uh, it was right around the beginning of the pandemic, and uh, we noticed that there was already an increase in like food insecurity and everything. So we noticed it would be a, a great help to that community. Oh, wow. So let's see, when, when did you actually build it? Did you build it yourself as part of your project? Uh, so I had a mentor who helped me a lot with the process. And it was installed around May 12th. But before then, it took about two to three months to actually design and build. And then on May 12th, wow. we scheduled the installation and, and uh, yeah, it was final. Oh, it's, it's just incredible. It's really beautiful. I don't know if everyone has had a chance to see it in person at church, um, but you should definitely stop by and take a look at it. It's, it's really nice. Um, anything else you'd like to tell us about it? Uh, yeah. So we had an, um, a food drive to originally stock it like once or twice. But uh, we never had it uh, like a long-term plan to like keep it stocked or anything like that. But um, thankfully, we have good patrons from the church who stock it when they can. Yeah, that's a good se segue to talk to um, Barbara, Barbara Simmons. She and her husband, Ken, uh, helped to 
they're both, um, you're both members of Spiritus Christi, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Okay, and and you help to keep it stocked. And what, what is that process for you and what made you decide to take this on? Well, actually, it started about a year ago. There was an article in the Democrat and Chronicle about these food covers, food pantries going up around town. And the group who I think started that are called Rock Food Not Bombs. And they would put out a list of locations. But I don't think they personally built all of these. These were kind of different. Wherever they're located, somebody at that location built them. Uh, some of them are very nice. Some of them are very poorly made and falling apart. Nothing compares to the one Nick built, which is just the premier edition. Uh, so we started out just going to a couple. We, my husband and I said, well, let's go see what this is about. And so um, we went to a few and we decided to move to kind of concentrate on the inner city where we thought there would be more need. So there's like three on Joseph Avenue. There's one on North Street near the David Gantt Center. Um, there's one, actually Emmanuel Baptist, we have a connection with them and they put up a small food pantry too. So it started out with just my husband and I doing it, but by word of mouth, we had people donating food and other items, you know, like uh, personal care items, feminine hygiene products, dish detergent and such. So we would just go to these different cupboards and pretty soon we got to know a lot of the people and we got to know what people really like or need in these areas. In the meantime, my husband's part of a men's group from Spiritus and one of their members, Mike Statura, had a connection with the Pittsford Food Cupboard. So my husband called them and they said, oh, we can give you some of our stuff. Uh, Jay, you probably know how they work. It's probably very similar to what you have. It's like they have a bunch of stuff that's delivered to them and they sort it out for people and such. So they also give us some things. Most of them, what we get comes from Wegmans. It's, they might have their meals, like when they put together a um, takeout meal and it's not sold, uh, they give it to us. It's not expired. It usually expires that day or the next day. So we pass those out, which are a very big hit. And it kind of grew from there. We've had more people volunteer to help us distribute. Uh, people either give us money and I do the shopping or they bring goods to our house. And that's kind of how it, it, it you know, started going. And uh, it's really grown. It's been a year now. And Nick's mom has also been part of helping us distribute food and stuff. So, um, and we've kind of learned what works. For me, what I noticed, like the one at, at, at Downtown United, um, that's more like foot traffic, although people do stop in their cars, but a lot of that is, there used to be, and there may still be homeless people living in the sister city's garage and down there. So I've gotten to meet some of those people and know what they like. Uh, you know, they like a whole loaf of bread. They either like white or wheat bread, no fancy bread. They don't like any of that fancy Pittsford bread, even though we get a lot of that. <laughs> I call it that, not to be facetious, but it's, you know, they, I, they just say, no, I don't want that. I want white bread, whatever. Um, and I'm able to get like cold cuts at Aldi's. They send, sell a pound of ham. Um, well, it used to be two seventy nine. dollars now it's three twenty nine. dollars but that's still pretty reasonable for a pound of, of sliced ham. And then cheese. So I usually package together like ham, cheese, a tomato, and a, and a loaf of bread, stuff like that. And I've also learned from just doing this what goes together. If you're going to put um, like tuna helper, then add the two cans of tuna to go with it. If you're going to put a box of cereal, if you can put a quart of milk with it. So, you know, we've, it's kind of learned. But over at the ones that are, um, you know, not in a residential area. Uh, I think what works is like, I started putting together bagels and cream cheese. So the homeless people that walk along there can grab something and have it. So that's just kind of where it's gone. And uh, we depend basically on donations. That's truly amazing. Um, my So my biggest question really is, like, how can we get involved and how can we, for both of, for both of you, how can we help out? Is it really money that you need? Don't like mm -hmm. physical donations. Um, like if we gathered up supplies, uh, do you have a list? I think Jay, you have an Amazon, do you have an Amazon list on your, on your website, which I will yeah. send out, um, later in an email so we have that um barb, barb you want to go first 
No, I, I, I would uh, welcome uh, donations. I'm happy to shop. And then I keep track of all the donations people give me so I can acknowledge them later. Uh, or even just donations of food items, canned goods. We, we have people bring us, like I said, uh, personal hygiene items. There's all sorts of needs. And, and with winter, we were giving away caps and scarves and gloves. So basically, I say anything anybody wants to give us, you'd be amazed at how fast it goes. I mean, people just come out. As soon as they see us coming, we have people that we already kind of know. And it's like, it, that cupboard will be empty. Not so much the one at downtown, although that gets empty too. But if you're over like on Joseph Avenue, um, we, we met, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Miss Maggie. She is at the Lutheran Ministries on Joseph Avenue. We gotten to be friendly with her and she does a lot for the community. So we bring stuff to her that she sometimes prepares meals for people uh, that come for lunch there. So whatever anybody wants to donate, we are happy to take and distribute. Oh, well, let me just one more thing. We, when the weather was a little icy the other day, we decided not to go out, but we also formed a partnership with School 45. They're over on Clifford Avenue. And they have a gentleman there, who, I'm not quite sure of his title, but he identifies kids who have a need. Like for example, they make it school lunch, but then they go home and maybe they can't count on a dinner you know, depending on what their situation is at home. So we make up little grab bags of like mac and cheese, fruit cup, the shelf stable milk, yogurt and such. And then and we love to get fruit because we love to pass out fruit. And then we just, he passes those bags out to the kids who need them. So. Okay. And Jay, what is the best way for us to... Um, to help out with the, the people's pantry. Yeah, again, um, I, you know, because of our increased expenses, I think the biggest thing is uh, monetary donations, um, which uh, if you go to uh, peoples-pantry.org, there's a donation button there. Uh, like you mentioned, we also have the uh, Amazon wish list that's also on our website, um, or you can just look it up on Amazon. Um, we also, we just need, um, you know, donations if you want to bring in stuff. Uh, uh, there's, uh, you'd have to look up the hours. Um, like I said, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday mornings. Uh, go to 555 Avenue D. You can drop off whatever non-perishable food items you have. Um, and again, volunteers, drivers, even if you just want to pack bags, um, we have a, uh, Josh is our, um, uh, program manager who is there pretty consistently and can get you set up, uh, with whatever task, uh, you feel that you can handle. And, uh, yeah, well, like I said, we'll take anything, uh, whether it be money, food, or, or, uh, just your time. Thanks, Jay. Sure. I have another question for Nick. So did you finish your Eagle, your Eagle Scout badge? Uh, yeah, yeah, we, uh, I finished all the paperwork and um, in a couple of months, I'm going to be having my Eagle ceremony. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, you, um, are you a senior? Yep. Yeah, I'm a senior at Schrader High School right now. Okay. Do you know what you want to do? Um, I recently got accepted to a RIT, and I'm going into a packaging engineering. Nice. Oh, interesting. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Jay, Nick, or Barb? Let's see. No. Um, I have a question. Um, Jay mentioned uh, the trouble he was having with the IRS. And I find that totally amazing. I mean, here you are, this very small operation, and all you want to do is distribute food, but you have to you have to go for nonprofit status because you pay rent. Is that why? I mean, there there's a variety of issues. Um, right now, we're trying to supplement the um, 
the uh, lack of donation, you know, lack of monetary donations with uh, grant funding, and you absolutely need to be a 501c3 um, in, in order to attract grant funding. So right. it's been kind of a, a big thorn in our side. Um, yeah, a, a lot of this just comes back to the pandemic, uh, the fact that uh, we haven't seen, um, you know, we've seen a lack of, of staffing in a lot of areas in our life. Um, and, uh, you know, the IRS is no exception. Um, we handed in our paperwork in August, early August, and we have yet to be assigned a case manager to our file. Um, so we're just, you know, it, it's tough. It's really tough. We want to be able to go, to go out there and, um, you know, fundraise and, and uh, attract grants. And it's been difficult. Yeah. Well, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Aline. I, I, I only want to suggest, but I'm, I'm sure you've thought of this, Jay, that, that this sounds like an excellent grant opportunity for the Community Foundation. Yeah, we have worked with the Community Foundation. Uh, luckily, the, the Presbytery of the Genesee Valley has been um, acting as our, our fiscal sponsor. Um, wow which is huge. Uh, we still can't apply for uh, a fair amount of grants um, that uh, just require our own, you know, they, they don't want to work with a fiscal sponsor. We need our own 501c3. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, RACF is not one of those. They've been willing to work with us um, uh, pretty consistently uh, since the beginning. And we are very thankful. Well, I think we're all grateful to to know that the, our presbytery is is helping you as well. That's that's good news. Yeah, presbytery has been uh, just incredibly incredibly helpful in this whole process. Um, you know, they're they're going through their own changes. Uh, just having to shut down and sell uh, Calvary St. Andrews has been mm -hmm. difficult for for the old congregation, difficult for the community and. Uh, they've had to do a lot of jumping through hoops uh, just to make that happen. So, uh, you know, big time of change for everyone. I had a, a, another thought that popped in my head, just the, the six degrees of separation, how connected we all are. Our current interim pastor, Lori Tiberi, was the chaplain at U of R, which I think is what Katie Joe is now doing. And um, and that gave you an opportunity to step in. And uh, I like I like seeing those connections. Yeah. And yeah. I wanna sorry, Jay, go ahead. No, I just I don't I'm uh, astounded at the timing. Uh, you know, the last uh, seven or eight months, you know, it's very uh, very serendipitous, and and uh, I I count myself very lucky uh, that things worked out the way that they did. I have a question for Nick. Who is this wonderful person sitting next to you? Oh, uh, this is my mom. Hi, sorry I'm late. Hi. Uh, I just, oh, nice uh, to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you too. I just had one comment. Um, uh, if you're looking for. I would just suggest to maybe give uh, uh, St. Martin's Church a call. Um, they have a, as, as Nick mentioned, they have a food pantry on their grounds too. And it might be good just to see how they handle it. I, I believe there's a certain person that works there that kind of manages it, but it's, you know, it can't hurt to get some ideas from them as to how they've been managing it. That's another one that gets used quite a bit. Thanks, Marge. Yeah. Any other questions? Carolyn. Yeah, I, are we allowed to just like put things into the little food pantry that's outside of downtown church? I know once when we brought a bunch of things to church for, I don't know, some sort of offering around the, the um, communion table when a lot of people brought food, then they packed the, the pantry with that food. And I just didn't know if that's something that 
we're, we can just like put stuff in or should we make sure that the people who are kind of stocking it are the ones that put stuff in? Uh, I, I'll just uh, speak to that. I think you absolutely can put stuff in. I mean, it goes very quickly. And people at our church also, at Spiritus, when they come for different services, they'll put stuff in. So, yeah, there's nobody really monitoring it and deciding. But I can tell you that just about everything that's put in is used, and, and someone will take it. We have you some agree, Nope, I was just going to say the same thing. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, I like to defer to Nick because he is the architect of that cupboard. So, <laughs> but <laughs> we have some voracious crafters, knitters, crocheters too. Is um, our blankets and hats and scarves generally welcome as well? I would say yes, because what we've gotten in donations again has gone really quickly. Uh, with the cold winter and stuff. So I would say yes. And I don't know about you, Jay, do you take clothing at your place? We do not. Um, and it's more or less a, a space constraint. Uh, we do a pretty high volume of uh, feminine hygiene items. Um, and uh, um, we don't mess around with with gloves uh, and socks too much, but on a personal level, I've, I've um, uh, tried different efforts to distribute um, uh, socks and gloves and specifically like hand and foot warmers, those packs that you can get. Yep. Those are incredibly popular, especially right now. There's a lot mm -hmm. of people who don't have access to, um, you know, warm shelter uh, consistently and having those available is, is huge. So I would say, you know, if, if you've, if you've got a, um, a food cupboard out there, I have one in front of my house that I built eons ago, and uh, it's amazing how quickly they empty themselves out. You know, even when you're not paying attention, all of a sudden one day, you know, you're down to next to nothing. So you know, put in your your warm socks and your in your gloves and uh, and you know hygiene items, anything that you use on a regular basis that uh, maybe someone might have trouble buying on their own. Nancy. I'm sorry, I had somebody at my door and I missed a bit of the conversation. You were talking about, yes, you would like blankets. I have some, um, uh, oh, what do you, not felt. Fleece. Fleece. I have a couple of fleece. Can I put those in the little food cupboard? Because I take my stuff there. Mm -hmm. I can put it in there. Okay. Oh, I would say yes, sure. Okay, perfect. I wasn't sure. I've got a, a, a drop off for you guys, but I just haven't been down there. <laughs> so, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. We still have time for a few more questions or Jay, Nick and Barb, if you have anything else you wanted to add. I'll just speak to uh, being grateful to be invited to this. And, um, you know, you, I think you have my email now. So if there's any way you want to contact me, um, I'll be responding to you. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to meet with all of you. Thank you. Thank oh, you. thank thank you so much for coming, all three of you. It's thank you. It's been thank a real you. pleasure to to have you come and talk to us. Yep. And to learn I'll, more. I'll uh, in a similar vein, I'll I'll offer up my contact information, which I'm not sure if you have access to or not. But uh, my personal email, which is also my work email, is J Rowe. That's J A Y R O W E at gmail.com if anyone has any questions offline they want to ask or uh, are curious about getting involved, just send me a message. Barb and Jay, are you okay with me posting your emails to eConnect? It's the, our newsletter within the church. Please do. I'm fine, yeah.
Nick, do you have any plans to build anything, uh, anything coming up? Uh, no, but uh, we do have some, um, our youth group planning to maybe like once a year upkeep the pantry by like mm -hmm. maybe retouching it with some stain, you know, just making sure it's always in, you know, good condition. Um, oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I would also make a, a, a another comment about, you know, future pantries, if, if there's a continued need or, you know, suggest to local uh, troop, scout, Boy Scout troops, because if somebody's trying to get their eagle, a project like this is, is perfect and it's kind of a win-win situation. So, you know, if there, if any of you have suggestions on where one would be, you know, could be used or would be a good location or something, you could, you could contact one of the uh, Boy Scout troops. Nick belongs to Troop 110, and they meet at St. Martin's Church in Webster. But, um, you know, all the troops are probably in the same, similar situations. And Nick's always, a, you know, I'm sure he would be a, available to be a, a help, a mentor somebody uh, that's, that's doing this, you know, in any troop. Awesome. Well, I have a follow-up question real quick about package engineering. <laughs> is that, that's right, what you said, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what is that, um, what inspired you to go, go for that? Uh, well, when I was a kid and my mom had take your kids to work day, I was always uh, interested in the egg drop contest. Like, you know, <laughs> trying to package it all together so it won't crack when you drop it from like 10 feet high. But, uh, yeah, it's basically how everything is packaged to like keep it safe and like make it environmental, environmentally friendly and like as cheap as possible. Cool. I, I was wondering if in the environment had some part of your decision. Yeah, yeah, you want to keep like things uh, sustainable so it doesn't hurt the environment. Yeah, people throw okay. out so much packaging. And there, it just it just um, magnifies, you know. It just gets worse and worse. And then it's the plastics, you know, whether it's packaging or not. And so many things are recyclable now. It's very impressive. They all have the little recycling symbol on them, and they say, "Take this to your uh, the store you bought it. Take it to the store and recycle it. If you can't recycle it." The packaging, I think that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any last questions? I don't have a question. I, I just want to thank you, Corey, for um, engineering this, for putting mm -hmm. it together. This was really yeah. a, a wonderful program. Yes. My pleasure. <laughs> this was a fun one to work on. Thank you. Well, how about I give um, each of you a, a minute or two to just give some closing thoughts about your organization and 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 um, how we can help or what it's meant to you, um, you know, from the inside out, looking out at people that you've helped. Uh, I'll start with Jay. Goodness. Yeah. Um, this whole experience has been eye opening. Um, like I said, I, I shifted over to uh, pantry work about seven months ago. And um, I, I knew that there was uh, an issue with hunger in Rochester. And I knew that the pandemic was driving a lot of that. Um, I just didn't know really how how deep it went, how bad it was you know, out there. And there is some really significant need that a lot of people just don't see. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very excited for the future. I, I think, you know, there, there's only room to improve. Um, there's so many lives that you could touch in this work. Um, I encourage everyone if they have uh, time and ability to just stop down and, uh, you know, even put in, a three hour shift and just see uh, what exactly uh, is happening out there in our community. I think um, 
you know, I, I think you're going to love it. I think there's a lot of ways to uh, touch people's lives and, and uh, in a meaningful way. Where is the Lincoln Library? The Lincoln Library is on the corner of Joseph Ave and Avenue D mm -hmm. in the city. Okay. I think I know where that is. Sure. And Nick, any final thoughts from you? Uh, well, I just want to say it was great working with the church. And um, it was a real shock to see how fast the pantry got emptied once it was like full of food. So it's good to know that it's being used a lot and it's benefiting people. Oh, definitely. Thank you so much for that, for your idea and bringing it to reality. Thank you. And Barb? I'll probably just echo what Jay said. It's, it was a real eye opener. You know that there's a lot of need in the city and there's a lot of food insecurity, but when you see it in person, it's pretty amazing. But people are so generous to give to us and people that receive are very grateful. And that's the most touching. I mean, every time we go out, we meet somebody who says, thank you, or, or God bless you, or an angel, you're an angel for coming today because we need all of this. And I think that's been the best, not that you look for things, all of you know that, but it's just kind of nice to know that you've made a difference and people don't just take you for granted. They really, really are grateful. So um, it's been, it's really been helped me probably more, it's done more for me than it's probably done for them. You know, it just really makes me feel happy that so many people can be helped and it's a blessing. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Jay, Nick, and Barb, for coming and sharing so much. My head is full of thoughts and ideas and, and, and things that I'm going to percolate on for a while. I'm sure everyone else feels the same way, too. So uh, it's 3 o'clock, so we'll sign off and um, hope everyone is uh, going to stay safe and warm for the rest of the evening and um and uh we will have two um two forums in february i think uh let me get my calendar here i think it's the well elaine do you remember what days is it the 6th and the 20th it, yeah. Yes, yes, it is, of course. Six, the sixth the and first the 20th. Sunday and the third Sunday. Okay. Roberta Davis is going to come and talk to us about um, critical race theory and also the indigenous uh, land acknowledgement that we say at the beginning of meetings and so forth. And like, where did that come from? Why is it important? Um, and some, some more information about that. So bring your questions for that as well. That will be nine o'clock on those Sundays. Excellent. Oh, good. Nine, nine o'clock. Nine a.m. Oh, Before nine church. Nine a.m. and it will be on Zoom and and then hopefully, well, I, we don't know yet, but hopefully church will be back in person oh, sure. and. Um, Barb put her email in the bottom there. It's, uh, let me just read Thank it you. out loud. It's kenbarb at rochester.rr.com. And um, uh, I guess that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone Thank you. for coming. Thank you. Have a great Thank rest you. of your day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.